Okay, so welcome to GSS. And this week we have Antoine who is going to talk about knots. Okay, so my first time in general. And um, I have to start with, I guess, an apology or a disclaimer perhaps. I was introduced to knots uh, working with physicists, so we were looking at this as a magical toolbox which allows us to say lots of really great things. But I have to admit, the goal when I started looking at this stuff wasn't to try and prove anything, obviously. So, I'll have a few baby proofs in there, but mostly I will state a bunch of really, well, in my opinion, interesting facts about knots and what they allow you to do, and take all these tools that they allow you to do. So I guess first of all I should tell you what a knot is. And really, the key idea here is that we're going to define them in such a way that we can only worry about uh, simple diagrams we're going to draw, right? Because they're going to be curves in R3 which can get messy, so we're going to restrict it such that all we have to care about is uh, not to can draw. So, to maybe I'll just motivate the definition, let's look at a couple of things that can go wrong if we're not careful, I guess. So, basically, because you don't, you want to have the right notion of not equivalent. You want to have a sensible idea of when two knots are the same. Because, for example, if I look at um, something like this, so I want something like this guy. A knot to which I, I, mean, I just take a loop and I start knotting it at the top. But then I could say, okay, clearly this knot has to be the same, uh, the same thing but with a smaller loop uh, up there. I mean, this is, this is sensible so far. I mean, the, the loop doesn't say the same, but the, the knotted part gets smaller. But surely these two things should be the same. The problem is, if our notion of equivalence is too weak, then by taking the size of this little knot up there to zero, we would get that all these things are So we have to make sure we rule this out, because obviously they're not the same. And the other thing we have to be careful about, because they can get nasty, are those uh, what are called wild knots. Because pretty well, pretty messy. And it's essentially the same problem again. We have this um, this pattern here. But let's and then I have this with a big loop and then I'm knotting things. But let's say that I keep adding tiny little knots like this. I keep going on, what do I get? I promise you they will do lots of pictures, so and I keep adding and I keep adding little things, I keep adding them smaller and smaller. And again, I don't want this to be a knot because it's it's going to be a hor it's going to be a horrible mess. So, <laughs> well, that seems like a good enough reason for me. Um, anyway, so so this this is basically two things we have to be careful about. So now we can uh, define knots in such a way and not equivalent in such a way to rule out these two guys. So we will say that a knot is an embedding uh, as you say a continuous uh, continuous injection of S1 uh, into R3. And you can play the same game if you go up in dimension with both of these guys, but obviously it gets harder to draw, so I'm not going to do that. And then um, we want to know when two knots are equivalent. So Remember to think of to worry about it. So two knots are equivalent. And the idea is that it's not enough to, to say they're equivalent when they're curved, when we can deform their curves into one another. It's, uh, we need more than that. We need to be able to deform the whole space into one another. And uh, this is called uh, an ambient isotopy. You have to modify the whole space with it. So two knots are equivalent when uh, there is an ambient isotopy between them. And there is, and I'll, I'll define this in a second, isotopy between them. Your no, one doesn't seem to rule out. Sorry? Your one doesn't seem to rule out this nasty case. This guy? Yeah, there's going to be a group for that. We're gonna t we're gonna say that we're gonna we're gonna say this is a wild knot, yeah. and then we're only gonna care about the other guys, which are called tails. Oh, but it's still so. A knot. This is still okay. yeah, it's, it's still a knot, mm -hmm. but it's uh, wild. it's wild. 
and we're very tame because we're mathematicians apparently. So. No, it's uh, it's it's still the knot, but and for the rest of the talk, when I say knot, I really mean tame knot. Where an isotopy, an ambient isotopy, so i.e. some f from R3 cross 0, 1 into R3 uh, such that for all t this guy is a homeomorphism and it takes Let's say k1. It takes uh, the, not, uh, the not k1 to k1 at time zero and to k2 at time one. So f of the k1 at time zero is the first knot, and at time one is the second one. And you're absolutely right. We still don't want this guy. So we will say that a knot is tame. When, uh, well, essentially, there's only, what's the problem here? We have uh, infinitely many knotted things. So it's going to be tame when it's equivalent to a polygon, polygon like a polygonal curve. It's just a bunch of straight lines. Um, it's tame when it is equivalent to, so, to a simple closed polygonal curve, so not self-intersecting and closed, of course. Polygonal curve. <coughs> All right, so I just take a bunch of points and I link them with three lines. It's not self-intersecting and that's uh, closed. It has to be closed. Okay, so I know what a knot is, but that's not... I yeah. Um, do you require any continuity in the verbal T? Uh, F? Yes, uh, we do. I should have said that uh, F, the, the, the whole F is continuous. The whole, the, the, this, this guy is on... Yeah, but that's only when I fix T as a map from R3. So, so yeah, otherwise I just have a bunch of maps that don't need to enter there. This is like really a composite for one of them. So K, K1 and K2 are knots, right? K1 and K2 are knots. So they're functions from S1 to R3. So when you say F of K1, 0, are you recomposing? Yeah, okay. The, the it's, it's going to be this guy is going to be uh, the image of K1 maps to. Oh, you just require the images to. Yeah, just the images. Oh, okay. okay. I guess the remaining is something. Yeah, so. Yeah, sorry. So. Again, in the definition, the, the, the knot is a... I mean, it's the same thing when, when you deal with curves in general. You just end up talking about the subset that is the curve, not the like, map itself. So, that's, but that's a good point. Um, so, I guess when I say knot, I mean tame knot, and I'm just looking at the subset. Not as I read the embedding itself. Okay, but basically this is... So, okay, we know what we're working with, but we don't know how to work with it. And how to work with it is basically because I've drawn these things now, like this. These are already examples. I mean, each of each of those separate is an example of a knot diagram. So we just want to know what we're allowed to do when we're drawing these things, um, and basically then say that we only have to care about this. You know, it's going to be t since we're only caring, only considering very simple knots. It's going to be it's pretty clear that the, the problem is going to be what the problem is going to be. I want to because this, so this thing is it's not this in R three and I want to make sure that there is a projection uh, that is good enough where if, I, if I'm looking at this guy like this just circle and projecting like projecting along looking down this then I'm just seeing a line obviously I don't want that but you can always move your projection a little bit and uh, have something that's good and by good that's uh, next definition let's let's see what projections we're allowed to use and actually.
And the idea here is going to be in the same spirit as requiring knots to be tame, which is essentially having finitely many things. Here we want uh, when you have when you want to worry about finitely many points where the projection is degenerate, where it crosses. So uh, projection. Oh, just a quick side note. Why it doesn't? Why it's not interesting to talk about knots in like R four? <coughs> because basically, you can always unknot it, right? I mean, if if I'm so, this is not going to be a knot. This is going to be a link, right? I have two circles, and so they're sitting somewhere in R three. But now, if I put them in R four, I can cheat and say that I can, because I can just say they're like in R three cross zero, say, and then I can move this part in like R three cross one. I just move it up somewhere. I move the other part down. And now they're in completely different spaces, so I cross them and there's nothing interesting happening. So, so in the definition of now, we're going from S1 to R3, and if we go up in dimension like the same amount in both, we get more interesting knots, but if, we, if the difference is not two things are not interesting. So, yeah. And okay, a projection from R3 to R2 is uh, regular. If it's essentially only finitely many bad things can happen. So it has finitely many, uh, let's say, multiple points. So, like every time a point is mapped to, it's only finitely many points that are mapped to more than once. More than once. Well, so, regular is like pertaining to some things, not. No, it's not. Yes. Otherwise, uh, yeah, otherwise it's not. Oh, and actually, okay, just this is just for family, but I'm going to keep talking about nodes. Most of the same things can be said about links, which are just taking copies of S1. I mean, this, this, for example, is a link because I have two copies of S1. So I'll just use the word not throughout. So finitely many multiple points, and each multiple point is only a double point. So, so what am I ruling out uh, like every time? I, I don't want I don't want uh, two strands to look something like this. This is bad, but of course I can just change the orientation of it, and that will be good. And the second one, what I don't want to go wrong is I don't want to have something. <clears throat> Like this, like this, this is bad. But again, change the orientation a bit, I always get only a double point. So, so every multiple point is only a double. Every multiple point. It's a double point, and then what else do I have to worry about? Um, yeah, I have to worry about this that I don't have a strand going like this, and then another one doing this. Like, all, every time they intersect, I want the intersection to be transversal. So, yeah, all, inter so, <coughs> all intersections are transversal. Building up to saying all I have to worry about are knot diagrams. So well, let me tell you what a knot diagram is then. Uh, essentially, a knot diagram, let me make sure I'm not. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a regular projection, right? But then I have to tell you more because if I have, so if I have this. That's, that's a perfectly acceptable projection of a knot, but I don't know how to reconstruct the knot. So I have to make sure that I know, what the, I know how to label the crossings, and for some purposes, the orientation will be important as well. So a knot diagram will be a regular projection of a knot where I label the over and under crossings and the orientation. So a knot diagram is a regular projection of a knot. a regular projection with enough information to reconstruct the knot. So 
um, such that under and over crossings and orientations are available. And now, here's why all of this works. Essentially, it's a no two knots are going to be equivalent if they're not diagrams are equivalent. In, in a very nice way, because essentially there's only, I mean, right, so, so not, well, it's still there. Knots are equivalent when there's some uh, ambient isotopy taking one, taking one to another. But actually, it's going to be, but it's, <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of things to check, I have to check all of those. So instead, we're just going to look at it's enough to look at any knot diagram of each knot, and then we have a certain num finite number, well, there's three of them, three moves that we can do on the diagram to just get from one to the other. So we, there's, not, there's not much that we have to check. And uh, I'm going to state those as facts. The proofs are not terribly, they're not, there's nothing uh, necessarily deep, it's just going to take, it would take like half an hour, 45 minutes, and we will get to the fun stuff, so I'll say this thing about that. Um, two knots are equivalent. Uh, okay, first I should tell you what you can do with knot diagrams. So those are called Rider Meister groups. And the, the surprising thing about those is not that they're allowed, like that's pretty obvious, the really important thing is that there's only three of them and they're enough. Um, that's, all, that's all you have to do. So <laughs> the first two are pretty obvious. It's just telling me that if I have this or that, it's the same. They're, they're, they're equivalent. I'm allowed to change this. It's pretty straightforward. So the first one. The second one, uh, the so second one is the same thing, it's a similar thing. If I have this, it's the same as just two parallel strands. That's pretty obvious as well. The third one is not much trickier, but um, let's see. So it, it happens when we have something like this. We have three strands, and then essentially, um, let's, let's consider this guy. All I want to say is that look, this guy is the, the red strand is underneath the white one, and above the blue one, so I can shift it still be underneath the white one and above the blue one, so I can shift it there. That's all I'm saying. So I have, it's equivalent to this guy. Or now, now my rest strand is here. Okay, and these two things are the same. Okay, so then two knots are equivalent when you can go from one to the other by finitely many of those moves. And the really, uh, I mean, it's not surprising these things are true, that you know, the two knots are equivalent when they're related by this. What is surprising is that this is all you need, you don't need anything else. So, in fact, two knots are equivalent. Same after finitely many right of moves. Okay, and okay, so now, now we can get to work and we can actually draw some knots and say things about them. So this is really nice. All I have to do is I just have to draw pictures and then I'm good to go. The problem is uh, it would be really nice to say that uh, starting with any diagram of a knot, I 
have a nice way of just simplifying the diagram at every step to go towards, like if I have uh, something that is just a really complicated way of uh, uh, representing the, the unknot, I, I want to know that I can just simplify my diagram. The problem is that there are some examples of knots where you start with a certain number of crossings in your diagram and you have to go up before you start going down. So, and I'll give you such an example now. So this is nice, but, and then there's something that's slightly better than this, you know, so given the number of crossings that your diagram originally has, you know how many moves you'll need to go to the simplest form. But that bound is, is a ridiculously big upper bound, so you know it's finitely many, but it's not very useful. This is a pretty basic statement that you know they don't know what the, how many moves you would need. Like they don't have a good upper bound for how many moves you need to simplify not. Which is a pretty elementary question, but turns out to be very hard because you have very simple examples. So let me see if I can draw this one. Right. So That's a knot, right? And the problem here, I mean, the reason why this is uh, an interesting knot is that it's quite, well, it's quite clear that this, like, a really easy way to simplify the whole thing, I have this run here that's underneath the whole thing, I just want to push it away, like, push it all the way up there, right? Like, that's easy to see, but if, you, and, and it's an easy example of why you, you have to make the knot uh, more complicated, the knot diagram more complicated before you make it simple, because I can't simply push this across. What I have to do if I do one of those at a time is I start by saying, okay, I wanna I wanna I wanna take this strand here and put it there, and then I wanna take this strand and push it across here and so on and so forth. I have to do it step by step, which makes it um, uh, trickier. I mean it makes it uh, it means that I don't have a simple monotonic uh, sequence in terms of number of crossings and the number of crossings has to go before the which is a problem. Does that make sense that you have to just do this? Um, right, so I know I have knots, I know what I, what I can do with them. I haven't actually told you that I have anything that turns out not to be the unknown, right? It could be that they're all equivalent to the unknown. And there's a really, I mean, it's not, it's not hard to show, obviously, that there's an ontario knot, but there's a really cute way of discussing that that is due to uh, William Thurston, that was a huge geometer, and um, he's got a really easy way to talk about it, so I'm going to, I guess, steal part of his intuition and talk, tell you guys about this. So, the knot we're going to look at is, well, okay, so first of all, I want to, I want to use this discussion to show you that there's a knot that's not the unknot. So let's talk about the, let's talk about the unknot first, quickly. The way we're going to find interesting properties of this and show that the other knot has different ones is we're just going to consider this loop to be some sort of portal, okay? Let's say it takes us to Narnia, okay? So if I go through the portal, I'm now in Narnia, I'm walking around in Narnia seeing lots of weird things. And then when I walk through the portal again, it doesn't matter which direction I'm going, if I walk through the portal again, I'm back in the real world, right? So the unknot doesn't do a lot of interesting things, it's just Narnia and the real world and that's it, right? So now let's see if we can do some more interesting stuff with more interesting ones. And I want to look at this knot. Alright, 
so now let's see what happens here. So let's say that I go to uh, this guy, and it's called this portal A, and I land in Narnia, I walk around, become king and all of this stuff, then I walk through it again, I'm back in the real world, then let's say I go through this one, and then I'm in, uh, I don't know, let's say Middle Earth now. You know, lots of adventures, blah, 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 you go see a volcano, it's all fun, and then you come back, you come through this portal and you come back. And now I want to see where these other two portals lead. Do they lead anywhere interesting and do they relate nicely to the others? And, okay, so let's, uh, let's look at this. Let's say that I go through, let's say that I go through the portal A first. Right, so I'm going through A and then I'm going to go through B. Alright, and now, I don't know if it's obvious, but if I just move this strand through here, this is ex this is the same thing as if I gone through the middle one immediately from the start, right? I'm just taking this guy and moving it here. It's, uh, I'm doing this because this strand is above this one and below this one. So if I move it here, I'm still going to be above this one. Uh, Oh, right, yeah. Uh, below this one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm below this one and above this one. So this guy, this, this portal here is the same thing as doing AB, right? And now let's see if I can play a similar game here. And it's not a surprise, I can. Uh, so let's see. Let's go through AB first. I'm going to go through AB first, and then I'm going to come back through A. I'm going to do this. <coughs> okay, and so, and so again, it should be, if, if I move this one here, I get that I just went through this one, right? So I have uh, this. Same thing as this. So if I go through AB and then back through A, I get this guy. And now I can do another thing, which is I'm going to come back through B and then through AB. Okay, so I go back from B. No. Back through B and then uh, through AB. And now, again, I can do the same thing. I can uh, point this one across, pull this strand underneath here. And this is the same thing as just going through this guy, right? And this is the same thing as doing this. So this guy is also equal to what? It's also equal to doing B minus 1 first and then AB, right? So now I found out, what did I find out? That AB inverse is B inverse AB. So BAB is AB. So this now turns out to be different than the other now, right? It's creating a lot more portals, but they're related in a nice way, and you can have this guess map. I start here from home, and then what do I do? I can go through A, and go through B. If I go back, if I go through A again, I can just get back here. There's nothing interesting. Or I can do this, and end up in AB. And same thing here. I can do this and end up in BA. And then the whole point is there's only one final project, final destination. And then what can you do? You can see this guy as a shortcut, basically. It's taking me straight from this to there. But it's kind of a boring shortcut because I can just go back and forth. And this guy is actually much more interesting because if I take, if I go along the middle, I now have to go through the portal three times if I want to go back home. So it's a different, much different situation from the other. And this is, this generalizes to a nice way of describing not because essentially all we're computing here is the fundamental group of R3 minus that not. Yes, if you're in Narnia the, and you want to go back home, does it matter which side of the portal you go through? No, it doesn't. It's just, uh, it's just a portal like Narnia home. It doesn't matter which way you go. Seems reasonable. <coughs> if you accept sure. that Narnia exists, it's not a good reason. Anyways. Have you briefed 
imagine this is the fundamental group of R three minus the norm. So does that mean that the fundamental group is generated by A and B subject to the ratio of B and B? Yes, uh, that's exactly right. Okay, there's nothing else to it. Yeah. All right, so now, um, okay, this, this is just like some, some <coughs> basic uh, generic not stuff. Uh, I want to talk a bit more about, um, essentially more about what drew physicists to be interested in that stuff. Which is that for, for really nice knots, you can actually, uh, <coughs> I mean, in a sense, this is say that you can knot the whole space using the knot. The idea is that you can decompose the whole space in a way that is consistent with the knot. I'll make that uh, precise in a second. First, um, as an intermediate step between this idea and uh, what we've done so far, let's talk about another way to distinguish knots, which is, which is to talk about uh, the reference. Which is that there is this cool construction you can do, which is given any knot, you can find a surface whose boundary is that knot. And uh, <coughs> that surface is going to be oriented well to well. You're not going to know what the mode is. And the, the construction is simple. I mean, and this is interesting because basically what we want to do now, well, what we want to do, uh, it turns out that you, what we're wondering is if it's possible to have a knot sitting in R3 and then to have a whole bunch of surfaces whose boundary is the knot that fill up the space without self-intersecting. Which doesn't, it doesn't seem obvious that you can do that. I mean, the knot might just twist in a weird way and so on. So, so but first of all, we can check the case where we just want one surface. And that is something you can, turns out you can do for uh, for every knot. And these are called uh, C for surfaces. Essentially, I just want to find a surface such that the boundary of the surface is the knot or or link. And the construction is very simple. So let's talk about the the, state, the same knot again. This is this is my knot. And I have to give it an orientation, so, okay, let's pick this. <coughs> All right, so now, now I want to construct a surface whose boundary is done. And uh, essentially, the only thing I have to worry about is what I do around these, uh, these crossings, right? And there's a simple rule which you follow, which is that you're going to glue the strands uh, following the orientation. So I'm going to, I'm, go I'm basically going to delete the crossings following the orientation of the knot. So I want now have this thing instead. That thing. So I end up with what? I end up with two disks. And don't think of uh, think of those. Think of this thing that this is an R three. So think of this as. I have one disk here, and then the other one is kind of like sitting somewhere on top of it. Okay, and so, and now, I have to essentially glue the two disks in the right way, such that the surface I get, its boundary is the knot I started with. And again, the algorithm, like the recipe is always the same, whatever knot you have. Um, so I'm going to have, essentially, little little strips going from one surface to the other but twisting because I want to make the uh, the overall surface orientable at the end of the day so let's see so I I mean again I just follow the orientation right if, if, I, if I'm along here I'm here along the original knot so I just want to go to this guy and I do the same thing every, everywhere I had to cross it so now I follow this one which gives me this and sure, I follow this guy. Okay, and you give your and now you can see that if I follow along the edge, I always have the same orientation, so I can just orient this. And essentially, uh, here I'm always looking at the at the same size side of the surface. Here. I'm always looking at, and there's the other side that I don't see this picture. And of course, I mean, it seems like I didn't really do anything by going from here to there because if, uh, these crossings, they're obviously they're the same. That's the whole point. I want, the, I want the surface whose boundary is the same knot. So of course, when I just look at the curve there, it's going to be the same thing. Otherwise, I'm going to stop somewhere. So you're going to end up like twisting. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm kind of, so, 
This one, um, let, I want to do the same line in different ways so you can see the twisting a bit more because here, the way it's done, you always see the same surface, but we can, um, the twisting becomes a bit clearer with a second, another example. And the twisting is just it's to ensure that the final thing you get is orientable. It's not twisting in the top right, the right way around. Okay. Yeah, something yeah. in my. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, because I start from the outside and I go inside. <coughs> so you're right, it was the wrong way around. The others uh, are okay. Yeah, because it was going the other way after the other side. I mean, the, the thing wasn't even. Like, no, he just ate something he just didn't. Well, it wasn't symmetrical. Right? I, I know, yeah. No, 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 but yeah, you're, you're, you're right, you're right. I was, going from, I was going from in to out, which is not what oh, I'm okay, okay, sure. So no, you're right. Sorry about that. Okay. And now, okay, it makes it like. So I'm right here. Then I start twisting and I'm still right here. Like right? the, uh, the the color was, was the color scheme didn't make sense before. But now no, it's uh, it's consistent. Okay. And okay, so I, I want to look at this guy. All right, and uh, exercise to the reader: show they're the same. No, no. There's actually there's a really easy way to see they're the same. Um, if I, if, I, if I just say, okay, I'm going to look at these two point, this, these points here. Essentially, what I'm doing by saying this is like, I can imagine this is sitting inside a cylinder and then gluing the ends, right? I get the same thing. And I can see that's actually exactly what I get here. I can think about, like, my, my torus going around here and have, the, so let's say that my two blue points are like here and there. What are these turns doing? They're just coming over each other every time like this. And it's exactly what these guys do. Like, this one comes over, and then the other one comes over, and then the other one comes over. So they're they're the same. They're the same knot, but we'll get a different representation of the surface, which makes the twisting thing a bit clear. So again, I do the same recipe. Uh, I have to give it an orientation first. So see like this, and now so I'm gonna get rid of my crossings like this. Let's see, so I'm going like this, and this guy is going like that. No, no, So my two surfaces are now like this, but now I have to put, add the twisted bands in, right? And then again, it, it, it's going to be the same guy, just remember this guy was like somewhere up here. And so my twisted hands look something like this. And now the... Uh, so th this one shows you a bit more what's going on with the, the colors, because now... So here I have some orientation, it's called this positive <coughs> orientation, or just red orientation. And now, so see, the disorientation just flips behind here, right? I, as I go along the band, I twist behind, and so this is going to have the opposite orientation. So this thing is just flipping on now. And it's, it's just that there doesn't seem to be much going on here because it's coincidence we only see one of the surfaces. And then that allows you to, again, uh, distinguish knots because you can define the genus of a knot to be uh, the minimum genus of all the surfaces you can build on top of that knot. So, like these surfaces are going to have a certain number of holes. I count those holes. I take the minimum over all the surfaces I can do that have the knot at boundary, and then that's the genus, the number of holes that the knot has. Wait. So, just to be sure, these two surfaces are the same up to uh, whatever surfaces are equivalent by. <laughs> well, there's no reason why they should be because if they kind of have different genus, then they would be. Well, these two might. No, be I think. Uh, those yeah, those two might be. I think. Yeah. So let's see. Because I, I want to like take the bottom, like the blue one, flip it wanna, over. Yeah, and you want to flip it right underneath and move, move these things mm -hmm. around. I think they're probably the same. By just flipping Actually, and twisting. The... No, right? Because uh, like these three things. Remember, these three twists are exactly these three twists here. So like these three. I'm sort of confused by that no, picture, really. actually, because what's the middle section doing there? Like, I, I could imagine a surface 
where you just see the surface part in the three connected components are around the outside, but it seems like in the fig tree you drew, at every crossing, three of the four bits have a surface next to them. I don't... And I three don't, of the four bits, what are the four bits? So when it, you have to, one straight crossing over another, that uh, sort of divides the blackboard into four regions, and you're drawing a piece of the surface in three of those regions, and I'm not sure I see how that's physically possible. So I have, um, I have like, <coughs> this pancake here, and then um, I have like three other blobs there. That, um, that pancake seems like I have like it's pictures coming up at the end of this thing in 3D. Okay. Helps. I don't remember if it's this one or that one. I think it's, no, it's, it's this one. So we can have a look at it. It's probably going to be easier. Otherwise, you can stare at this for a while. Okay. I have three pictures of this. Because they're not, they not of the same latitude, right? Okay, so you, you need to have that as boundary. If it, the what, what is not as the same latitude? At the middle of this. Is yeah, this is like as a new house, okay. type. Yeah, yeah th this is not all flat. Like this, okay. this middle bit that is like sticking out. Okay. This is like, this is like, a, this would be like a good idea for a water park. You have this middle <laughs> thing and then you have like slides going down. Like these are slides. Yeah. And slide here, slide there, and then slide here. I have this thing that is sticking out, and then if I slide down. <laughs> It's just hard to imagine. Uh, can you just have a strip and twist it twice and then glue the end together to form the same? Like oh, you want you want just want to like add yeah, to it, just, here, just, but you won't get the same knot as the boundary. Yeah. Well, I guess you can untwist the thing. No, no, you have a strip like, with wrist, and then you twist in the middle, mm -hmm. and then twist again, mm -hmm. and then twist again. You have three of those, and then you glue the ends together. Oh, and you want to say you get the same thing? Yeah, can you form the same thing with just a strip? Yeah, I think that's what you get. Like, you know, because you can just see it here, right? I feel like without the middle part, I can somehow visualize the... Oh, the middle part makes it harder to... You can just take off the middle part, then I can somehow visualize the surface. And now it's coming now. You don't use the disk as the surface? I want to know if it's the surface. <laughs> oh, so you're saying you just like take, oh, so that's yeah, your yeah, uh, yeah. your band that you don't have to go that. Is that the same though? Yes. That's also good. So, uh, the, my question is first of all, yeah, is this the, thing even valid? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have a problem because you have two disjoint circles, right? Do so I? Yeah, yeah, you're, I think you're, it's you're a stuck with a strip that has two boundaries. Ah, yes. I guess if you do three of those, yeah, then you have them three. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is obvious. Yeah, so you have one boundary. It's an obvious thing. It might work. Uh, and by the way, it's not here we want to do more of a surface. So this, so the thing I'm holding uh, 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 is uh, either uh, either its boundary is not a single component, but two components, or else it's not orientable. Yeah, that's a good point. This leaf is still yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think this little one will have to go there as well. Okay, so... Yeah. I guess okay, this is a few unresolved questions, I guess, but... I can shift from let's, let's move on to um, the more... The, the, the picture that's even, like, this one I'm not even going to try and draw, which is when instead of having one of the surfaces, I have now a whole family of those that they fill up all of our three in a nice way because the boundary is going to be the knot and they're, going to, and they're not going to intersect each other. That's, that's, the thing, that's the knots that are going to decompose our three in a nice way. Um, oh, and just for... I mean, I'll, I'll have to do that in a second. We can always think of... I mean, actually, that's how they usually define them. You always no, usually think, so, think of knots as... This is not uh, a surface because this is not oriented. Or not oriented. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm here to make get people in trouble, so that's good. Yeah, so the problem with the construction I said is that the surface not oriented. Have you tried touching a Mobius strip? Ah, the one you get is more oriented than the one you get. Okay, so. <laughs> then it yeah. get to the stage. Yeah, so. Yeah, stage one will perform. Yeah, so we'll need it for a tax technical reason later on, but you can, and you can always, like, everything we talked about is fine, because R3 you can just add a point and you get S3, so there's, everything we talked about is still good, and that's more general thing. And that's how they define us in general, like, SN and SN plus 2. Okay, so... Okay, 
this, this is what we want. We want to be able to construct knots that uh, fiber, like give a vibration of uh, S3. Uh, I mean, we'll say that, let's see, um, a family index over S1 because, uh, well, I'll draw a picture in a second, it will be clear. Family of C for, so C for surface is just a way of saying their boundary of the null. This is a legal knot because it closes up at infinity. And let's thicken it up a bit. So essentially, like a simple vibration in this case is just going to look something like a book, right? You have like these pages coming out. And, and actually, these things are called open book decompositions. And so, so, so this is what you have. So okay, for I mean, th this thing which you know closes up at infinity is is the unknot. There's nothing interesting there. As soon as I close it up, and as soon as I knot it up like this, it's not clear at all that I can find a whole family of these things that are going to cover my space. Okay, I wouldn't be talking about this if you couldn't, but so it turns out you can. And it turns out it's really, the, the representation is really simple. And this is a, a theorem due to the sky. Sorry. We're curious about what's happening there, but don't happen ignore it. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> uh, we're concerned because this building has a ninth floor. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't just coming through the roof. Wait, I, don't, oh, I don't think the ninth floor exists it's above here. I think okay. it's somewhere central. I certainly hope not. Yeah, There's gravity inside, so even if there was a night before, it could just go through. I know full well, because this happened in my apartment. <laughs> Alright, so, so, so what this theorem tells you is it's essentially, um, it's not going to be true for every knot that I can do such a thing. Um, but given, essentially, you can represent those, oh, I didn't write it, but a knot such that there is a, a knot for which there is a vibration is going to be called fiber. And it turns out that you can get a whole bunch of fiber knots by just looking at complex polynomials in two complex variables. Because there, if, you're, if you have a complex polynomial in two complex variables, it lives in like, you know, S3 isn't going to be inside of this. So then if I look at where that polynomial is zero, I get some surface living in, uh, let's say, like R4 pretty much. I have S3 inside. I intersect my complex surface uh, with S3, and that's what's going to give me my knot, essentially. And provided my polynomial is uh, nice enough in the right way, then uh, that knot I get turns out to be fiber. Because what is the polynomial going to give me? It's gonna, where it's zero, it's going to give me the knot. And then around zero, I'm going to have all my, I'm going to have the angle of my polynomial. So that the angle of the polynomial is going to give me how I index this uh, family of fibers. So Milner vibration theorem tells you that uh, for f, uh, from C2 to C, non-constant polynomial. Uh, which f of 0 is equal to 0, and 0 is a singular point of uh, Let's call 
is v, which is, it's, it's the zero, like where my polynomial is zero. So singular meaning essentially uh, that prime end, that you can't do like implicit function field uh, is so if it's an unconstant polynomial f is zero, zero is a single point of this. Then if I took oh an isolated zero singular point and isolated then if I look close enough to my to zero um, I'm going to get a vibration so if I look at the argument of my function as a map from this small s3 minus where the polynomial is zero into s1 that gives me uh, a vibration I mean because so this this S3, I can just identify, well, I can, I can project down from S3 to R3 using, say, stereographic projection. And then I have um, this thing, F takes complex value, like it assigns a complex value to everywhere in, in R3. Or at 0, it's going to be my naught. And then everywhere else, I'm going to get the, um, the complex like, angle that I get, gives me on which of those pages I am, basically. So, an example which we've actually already seen that this guy is, is that this, the trifoil knot, this corresponds to f of my z1, z2 is z1 squared plus z2 cubed. That, that's it. That's, that's all the information I need to give you for you to be able to tell me to write down at every point in R3 uh, on which of those pages I'm going to be. So, the reason why physicists think about this as the not nothing all of space is that now you can talk about um, something so physicists are going to be interested in, which is knotted singularities of vector fields, basically. Because what do I, like, if I have a vector field in the plane, like, my singularities are going to look like what? They're going to look like something where you know, orientation isn't defined. So, in the plane, it's kind of boring. But now, the thing, if I take this in R3, that my singularity could be along a line now. If it's along a line, I could knot that line, and I could knot it in non-trivial ways. And so now that I have like, a vector field knotted around this, can I still assign uh, a direction everywhere else and still get something where the only singularity I get is my knot? Well, this tells me that yes, I can. For some knots, some nice knots, or uh, fiber knots, I can. Um, actually, not necessarily every... So what's the conclusion of the theorem? <laughs> it's a vibration. It's a vibration. So I mean, yeah. If I if I take the, the pre-image of uh, every <coughs> theta is going to be my s theta here, and these things are going to be true. And so yeah, physicists are really. This is a really cool theorem for them because. Now I can have a vector field in R3 that is going to be, uh, I'm going to have a knotted singularity and I can write down, like, the, the expression is easy to write down because I know, what, like, look, here for the trifoil knot, if my singularity is a trifoil, this is all my polynomial is, and then I just have to uh, project that from S2 to R3, but okay, I just use stereographic projection, that's not too bad. So I have a, it's a really simple way to write down some vector field which has a, um, non-trivial, like a non-trivial knotted singularity, which is, so as promised, time for pictures, uh, Love part there's also like plates missing. So as a result, you can have this thing where a drop starts falling and another dro another drop beats it to the ground.
You can pat, I'm zoom in on everything on the bottom where it's oh, 100%, oh, oh, oh. or you can do that. <laughs> that's good. All right, so that's the trefoil knot. Oh my God. With, okay, so there you can see it's the trefoil knot, right? I have this like going on. It does look like a water park. Sorry? It does look like a water park. Yeah, <laughs> see, those are the slides. Those are, this, this, is the sur this is the surface we were looking at before. I have, this is my inside disk. And this is the now very, not this like outside disk. And these are my uh, water slides, right? So that's, that's exactly what, uh, what we had before. So <laughs> I'm are you, are you, is that better, better, more convincing? Yes. Maybe, yeah. I don't draw the water. So is it like a fan? Yes. Yeah. 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 Was this in the spectrum itself? No. No, 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 no. It goes no, it doesn't. Well, you can look inside. That's what happens. See, so it's not like a full bent, and I guess it's really neat. And this thing, how do you get this thing? Well, you take this guy, and then um, you know, you do like you look. Uh, well, no, I, I go back. I, I start from R three. I look where the point on S two is, uh, like you pretty much under stereographic projection, and then that point, I know where what my, the value of my polynomial is. So this is the surface. Which, where the polynomial, its uh, angle is like uh, zero or something. And then I can cycle through all of those and I cycle through the pages of my book. And so I don't have all of them. There's a few. So that's. Oh, so now, as you can see, what's. I, it's, it's behind the. It's not very clear. It's. Ah. So you have to think about this as, so, so the, my knot is like kind of almost planar and then the, the, the initial surface I had was here and then this surface is going to start like bubbling up in a way and then it's going to go up to infinity and then it's going to start closing up the other way. So that's, that's when it starts bubbling up on one side. I'll show you more details for another knot in a second. Ah, that's where it's, uh, that's where it's at infinity now. So. The, the, the water part before was sitting exactly here, and now I have basically uh, what's on the outside of that. So is this like the complement of the surface we had before, in a sense? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not complement well, because it's an like they, So, okay, what you could say is that here they're going to be like continuous, like, well, even more than that, like smoothly one into... Like if you take two of them together, you still get a smooth surface, I guess. Like they'll continue nicely across the knot. That is true. So in that sense, and also, um, I mean, technically you require a secret surface to be like compact. This is compact because I'm in S3, so it's fine. Well, I mean. And then there's the other guy, which now, uh, you know, it was bubbling up and now it's going the other way, so. That's, you can't see too much. So, I mean, this is, this is basically the, so this is when uh, the fiber is looking at, say, pi over 2. Um, and it's going to be like the mirror image of the one that I have when I have uh, 3 pi over 2. Okay, but so now I want to show you. Let's see, goodbye to the true form. This is one of the things that much of the Yes. Less than the other. So now the one, the, this one is. The whole thing, which is just the very simple thing, which is just this guy, right? And you can do the, I mean, this joint, the surfaces, I did it for a knot, you can do the same thing for a link. So essentially, this is a fiber link. So let's see. So in this one, I have a few more of those, so we have a better idea of what it, of the idea of like it's, it's cycling through the whole thing. Right, so it's closing up, and then it's going to come through down the middle, and then back the other way. Are these two? Uh, is this a link of two things linked together, or not? The the it's oh, not a knot. It's a link. It's, a link. it's yeah. this guy. You have two circles, but they're linked together. I can't pull them apart. They're not just disjoint circles. 
And then so, okay, this is uh, as you go as you cycle through the pages. And I mean, you also have to when you look at this. Remember, I'm, I'm using stereographic projection, so like it kind of everything that's inside the, the knot is kind of squashed down inside, right? Like if you look at like S two. Like the whole upper end, like if we do S2 to R2, the stereographic project, all the upper atmosphere is going to get squashed inside, and then everything else is going to blow up. So it seems like it spent forever here, but that's just because that's the um, deformation from the stereographic projection. A lot. So, yeah, and then I mean, now that you have this in hand, uh, physicists can go and enter this in the simulations and see what happens when they put knots in liquid crystals and they're all happy. So, let's see. And this is this is very basically the surface I get if I were to play the same game with uh, just doing it by hand. And, um, oh, I have another last one. I mean, it's the same thing, but these. This is another. <coughs> one. Okay, so these these links are pretty cool for the following reason. They show up, and I should tell you so. This is just. Uh, oh, that wasn't okay. So essentially, I have three links that are pairwise disjoint, but when I add the third one, now they're going to be linked. So, what do I want to do? I want to add one that's going to be uh, below this one, but above the other one. So now, together, they're linked. But pairwise, they're just going. And okay, you can see the same game. Uh, I guess you can zoom in on one. I mean, yeah, you've seen this. <laughs> okay, and I mean, again, a lot of the. a lot of how it's wrapped is also due to stereographic projection, but. It's not okay, and you have, and it gets really, you get really intricate going on this side. And uh, that's it, that's the talk.